Well, am I ever excited to finally get to troubleshoot an issue that I've been having with one of my main monitors here in the studio. I'm talking about a pair of KRK Expose E8Bs. This is a sort of flagship model from KRK that, that at some point they had to discontinue, and I'm almost certain I know why. It's because they spent way too much money in the R&D of this speaker. This thing is absolutely brilliant, and in the 15 years that I've used these things exclusively in my studio, this is the first time I've had them apart. I mean, for anything. I've never blown a woofer or tweeter or had a single issue with these monitors in over 15 years, and I can promise you I've abused these things, okay? I've worked on a lot of electronic music at extreme volume. These things are sort of unreal what they can actually produce. I've got to get to the bottom of something that's been sort of showing up intermittently. And I don't pretend to be an expert at troubleshooting by any stretch of the imagination, but this is one area I sort of enjoy because it's it's very logical and, and sort of when you approach troubleshooting from a very methodical kind of logical point of view, you usually have pretty good results in trying to find the solution to the problem. In this particular case, this is going to be challenging because, of course, it's inconsistent. It's not something that I can reproduce every single time in exactly the same way. So that always presents a challenge, right? Something that isn't reproducible. That's one of the first rules of troubleshooting, right? We've got to try and isolate what the problem is. And before we can do that, we actually have to have the problem show up. And this is so classic. Whenever you have a technician come into the studio, almost every time, whatever issue you were having just disappears. There's no suddenly no more problems going on, right? This is an issue that's been sort of messing with my head because what happens is every so often, the tweeter on just one channel will drop in its output level, sometimes all the way to zero, but not all, always to zero. It'll just drop in level. This was something that was messing with my head for about a week. I was really confused about what was going on with my ears. I was actually concerned about something until I finally realized it wasn't my ears, it was this monitor. So I expect this troubleshooting job to be a bit challenging just for the fact that I can't reproduce the problem guaranteed every single time. Now, luckily for me, in this particular case, we're talking about a pair of speakers. Well, I know that one of these monitors is functioning absolutely perfectly. That's sort of worth its weight in gold when you're trying to sort out a problem with a piece of electronic equipment. If I just had one piece of gear, I wouldn't have any other spare parts to potentially swap out or, or exchange to see what, if we can kind of narrow down what the problem is. Because I have a perfectly working version of the speaker, it opens up a lot of opportunities for me as a troubleshooter. So very important, before I go grab that good monitor and start disassembling it and swapping out components, it's critically important for me to check the power supply of the monitor that I'm having problems with, just to ensure that there isn't anything funky going on with the power supply. If there's an issue going on with that power supply, I could potentially damage the perfectly good working component that I'm trying to put in there, right? Fortunately for me, this is a biamp design, and they've actually got a modular design built into this where they've got separate amplifiers feeding each of the speakers. This one right here that feeds the woofer, and this amp card right here that I pulled out that came from here, this powers the tweeter. So I am like 95% sure that the issue that I'm having is going to be on this amplifier card for the tweeter. But it's electronics. There's no way that I can assume anything. So I've already completed this first step by taking this tweeter's amplifier card, connecting it to the power supply, and then literally taking my meter and going across this entire board and checking the voltages. Everything checks out perfectly. So with all of those voltage readings being correct and checking out to spec, I can feel confident swapping out different components, knowing that I'm not gonna do any more damage at this point, right? I'm trying to find the problem here. I'm not trying to create more issues. Now, I know some of you are going to be able to relate to this, but in my own experience of troubleshooting, I've learned to take a very slow and methodical approach to the process. This just comes from experience of allowing myself to be led down the wrong trail too early. Another way of looking at troubleshooting is it's really ultimately a process of elimination. You want to eliminate 
everything that you can so that you can ultimately try and isolate what the problem is. The best results that I get in troubleshooting is just a slow, methodical process of elimination. And even though I'm almost certain what this problem is, there are so many things that could still enter the picture. I cannot just assume that this is a problem with the amplifier. Why? Because there's an input connected to this. It's connected to a, 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 an input side, like a preamp side of the speaker. And there's an entire PC board full of components that make up that input section. Just because this tweeter is connected directly to this amplifier doesn't mean that the problem is inside this amplifier. It could still be in a number of other places. Probably just like a lot of you, the very first thing I do when I'm having an issue with anything in the studio is to go research it, to go find something online, see if someone else is having the same issue. Well, there's a common thing that's going on with this KRK design and the fact that they use some pretty funky uh, adhesives directly on the PC board only to learn that that adhesive somehow released moisture. I don't even know, that's scary in itself. Turns out that over time, it somehow released moisture and in some cases caused corrosion right on the board and within the components. So as a troubleshooter, if I believe that the problem is with this tweeters amplifier card, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is have a really close visual inspection of that card. And sure enough, when I do, I certainly found some evidence of corrosion on my board. Very little and, and minor, but there's a real possibility that this issue that I'm having with my tweeter could be related to that. It's unlikely, but there's a real possibility of that. So if that's a possibility, well, then I have to eliminate that possibility. Before I start swapping out components, I need to take the time to clean this board properly and visually inspect it. Make sure there's no cold solder joints or anything else going on inside that board that looks unusual. Probably half the solutions that I've found to electronic issues are physical. They're like visual. You can look on the board and see the problem. You don't even need the schematic. You just can look right on the board and see what the issue is. So as I'm cleaning up this board with my Q-tips, I'm going to be looking under my magnifying glass very carefully at all the components. Just make sure that everything looks right. It's amazing how many times on a printed circuit board like this that you can find a cold solder joint. And that will answer so many issues. A cold solder joint is exactly the sort of thing that ends up showing up as an intermittent issue. Why? Because as the temperature changes on this board, so does everything about the board. And those little cold solder joints will suddenly make connection or vice versa. And so for the rest of today's session, just gonna zen out and do a thorough job of cleaning this PC board, all the while doing a really close visual inspection of it. Once I'm done that, I'm gonna reassemble the speaker and put it back in place. After all that, if I'm still having this intermittent issue show up, which I believe will, then my next goal is gonna to be to try and move that issue over to my good speaker through a process of swapping components. And I know I can do that safely because I tested the power supply in the speaker that I've been having an issue with. You know, by following my kind of slow, methodical process, I'm probably gonna have to disassemble and assemble these speakers multiple times before I feel very confident about what I need to do next. And this is so important because these monitors, they weigh 70 pounds each. That's like a bag of concrete. It's not fun to move around, particularly to ship, right? There's no way in the world that I want to think about shipping this anywhere in North America to get fixed. I'm up in Canada. It's a huge pain to start moving great big components like this around. It's not necessary. I would much rather take the time up front, eliminate all the stuff that isn't wrong with the speaker, isolate the issue, even if it's just isolating it down to this. This is a lot easier to ship halfway across the country than this entire monitor. All right, so let's get into this thing. Remember the first rule when using contact cleaner. Never spray it directly on the equipment, right? Spray it on a Q-tip first and then apply it. So let's get busy. Mm -hmm. 